Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Offline Mode with me, PCH. So finally requirements are done and I can finally serve some uh, fresh episodes to you guys cause it's been a while since we had a full length episode. Anyway, so what we're going to see is the completion of my attempt to create a diverging diamond interchange. Although admittedly, it is uh, kinda incomplete as you'll see later on. Aside from that, we're also uh, doing some improvement in our railings as well as create a, the first city suburb which we will see more detailed in the next episode. But anyways, let's take a look at the interchange which is already near completion with the section connecting to the industrial district being completed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record all of the building processes out here because I did forgot to smash the record button and I only noticed that midway into the build. But let's not worry because we're gonna get some bird's eye view of the work as we wrap this one up. And so here's the shot that we've been talking about. I did have a hard time building this one but it is fine for me since it can really handle the traffic well for now. Because the thing is there is still the oil industrial area being planned to north which may affect the traffic here heavily so uh, yeah the traffic flow might change in the near future. Another problem for me here is that it occupies a really large footprint which makes me think that I should have made the highway below ground and the interchange on level ground rather than what you see right now. And I am probably gonna try this anytime soon because I think that it is really a much more effective build and it is one of the things that I do when it comes to putting up rail links. And that's the next topic that we are going to in this episode. So for this part of the video, we're placing our rail tracks beneath the surface as it passes through the highway. And in this session, I did 3 of these. But since they take time, we are only gonna see the build process for one among those 3 as an example. But why did I do this, you may ask? Why don't you just put those rail links over the ground? Well, for me, it depends really on the general feel of the area. When this kind of a rural type one, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like the idea of just putting the rail over. Maybe for the meantime, I might place it like that. But uh, once I focus on the area and build it up, those rail lines can kind of become unattractive to me in a way. So that's why we are here constructing this area. Anyways, focusing back on what's in the video, I think the reason why it takes me a lot of time back then was that I was still just experimenting back in the time, trying to get the elevation of the tracks and the surrounding right, as you see, which is really the bulk or the majority of the processes that I do in this build. Admittedly, at the start, uh, I was feeling kind of lazy in the completing all of these underground connections, and I was imagining how a city this could be with mods but in this instance my mind just couldn't allow myself to be lazy uh, i just couldn't accept it and so i put in the effort to uh, beautify these rail sections within the city and that's basically what i did for about 20 minutes of game time but regardless yeah uh, see you later on as we round up this section with some peaks at this underground rail links I'm back and let's take a look at some scenic shots of the three rail links that have been developed. Take note of some detailing in these areas to at least make it feel a little bit more vibrant in its own way. But with this now completed, let's head into the next part. And we're at the last section of the video building the first real suburbs within the city. Actually, maybe not the first since we already had our agricultural and forestry district which we're gonna update sometime. But let's focus back here where we attempt to have our roads constructed alongside the rail line that passes within our city. I usually don't like putting uh, rail intersections but since the area will generally not exhibit a lot of traffic, I don't mind it that much. But really, the plan is to make the area give out a bit of a rural vibes where some of the houses are 
are built with distances from each other and the road layout is different from what I do in urban areas. I for one do reside in an area far from the city center, although it's still packed with people since it's a planned residential area, but it's not far from our place where you can see some zones with houses that are located with some distance from each other and I kind of wanted to replicate that with this part of our city. Although let me be clear that this isn't really totally going to be a rural area with buildings far away because at some parts of this district there's gonna be those that are denser and packed within this place as you can see with the residential zoning that I am creating right now. The reason for me placing a lot of commercial zones here too, as you'd see even later on, is because I envisioned the area to look like one of the major stopover points for those transiting in the city as well as for those operating in the industrial areas of the city as the roads near the place is designed to handle both the traffic from the Agri Falls district as well as the generic industrial and oil industrial complexes. And aside from that, the area will also become one of the major entrance points to a place that you'll have to look forward to in the future episodes. What kind of area do you think this is? Put them down in the comments down below if you have some wild guesses. But anyways, back to the build right now. One of those bits of troubles in creating a district far away with the wide spaces between buildings is the electric connection and one of the things that I do with this is to plop an important service building first like the fire station here so that there would be a starting point for the electricity. Anyways, heading into the expansion of the district, we can see that compared to the other side, this area is much smaller. But it really doesn't matter that much for me. Uh, road layout wise though, we're still following the main feature of this place, which are the roads that run parallel to the rail line. And I think I'd have to spend some time detailing that part probably uh, put in some trees or barriers. Additionally, the plan is to just put in residential zoning sprinkled with some social distancing and I think among the areas, this is the one that probably gives out the rural or suburban vibes. And I am really happy as to how the district looked in the end because it felt like I achieved what I wanted for this area. And I am looking forward to further putting in some details in the district. So yes, let's take a back seat and watch as we put in the residential zones. And this is the completed rural district with details next to come. Looking at it, this really gives me that a bit far vibes and that makes me satisfied. After all, for me, this game is about pleasing your creative mind and uh, setting your own goals. And I hope that in a way, I was able to spark yours too. But anyways, if you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe for more upcoming content.